Hello ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to do some crafts with me? It's been a while since we've had a craft corner, but these take a little bit more for me to pull together. So we're gonna do four different crafts together and I think I've got them in the order where each one's gonna get a little bit harder based on your age or the supplies you might have at home. So our story that we just read this week was the pumpkin patch parable. And when I think of November and fall and Thanksgiving, I kind of think about pumpkins. So we're gonna do a few different crafts with pumpkins. So some of the supplies you're gonna need is we're gonna be doing a lot with construction paper this time. So if you have colored construction paper, that would be helpful. If not, you can always use just printer paper and then color it with your markers or with colored pencils or crayons or something, all right? So there's ways to make all of these work. So first one that we're gonna do is we're gonna make a paper strip pumpkin. So I'm gonna move you down here and try not to make you too dizzy and see if my thing's gonna stay okay. So I've got my orange construction paper, right? And all I'm gonna do is you might need some grown up help, but we're just gonna cut little strips, just some little strips. Cut some little strips. Now, I don't know what you guys do for your Thanksgiving table, but sometimes we'll decorate our table for Sabbath or for Thanksgiving and we'll do fun little like place cards or decorations on the table. So these could even become uh, little decorations on your Thanksgiving or Sabbath table, all right? So I've already got a bunch of strips cut here. This is what we're making. Here's our finished product, okay? So what we're gonna do is you could use tape, you could use liquid glue. I'm gonna use a glue stick. Liquid glue would probably be the trickiest, okay? So if you can stick to tape or a glue stick, but all you're gonna do is put a little bit of glue, hope we got some glare there, in the middle, and then we're just gonna do a crisscross. So just do a crisscross like that, and then we're gonna do another layer of glue, and we're gonna take another strip, and now we're gonna go diagonal. So we're just gonna do three strips here, because it's gonna kind of look nice and open, just like that. So, oh, I guess one, two, three, four. Four strips of paper. So we're just gonna let those sit like that. And then what we're gonna do is the one on the bottom, see how this is my very first strip? I'm gonna take that one from the bottom and now I'm gonna curl up. So you could actually probably, you could staple this, you could tape it, lots of different ways. Kind of like when we're making like a paper chain. Then I'm gonna take my next one. So now with this one, I've gotta glue it not only together, but on top also. So I got my glue. And then we're gonna go like this. So we're gonna end up doing a few more layers of glue to get all of my pieces to stick here. Whoop. Up like that. And then some more glue. So we're just um, going in the order that we um, place them. So my one that's on top, I guess my hand was in the way there. The one that's on top is gonna come up last. Peel this one up, almost done. So it's gonna make kind of this cool hollow pumpkin look. And I, so with this one, I made my strips of paper skinnier, right? So that you could kind of see more. This one that I did earlier, my pieces were really thick. Can we see? And so then I was like, well, this one looks like a pumpkin, doesn't it? But I wanted to see what one with skinny strips would look like. So now I've kind of got a better idea. So you can kind of make it whatever thickness you want. And then we just have to add like a stem or a leaf. So I just took some green paper and I'm gonna make like a leaf shape. So you can draw it with a pencil first or you can kind of just do a, a root de root kind of just to do a leaf shape. And then I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of paper here to make a stem. And I found that it was easier to do tape on this one, so we'll see. So I just folded my edge. I've kind of got a little bit of glue. Let me move this like this. So I'm gonna fold my edge 
and I'm just gonna tape it. So just a little bit of tape. That was a lot of bit of tape. Tear that. And I'm gonna tape it on here. So then you can kind of stick your finger on the inside to help press it down. So kind of tape my, my little pumpkin stem. And then if I wanted this to be like a place card on a table, maybe I would write someone's name. Maybe I would write, you know, grandma's name or your name or a sibling or maybe um, a visitor that you've got that you've invited over for Sabbath lunch. You could write their name on there. And then we're going to use my other little small piece of tape. We're going to just tape that on. And now you've got a little placeholder here. Got to curl my tape around so that it's not hanging off. But you've got a little, a little pumpkin. And then it could have your name and you could set it on like your dinner plate. Okay. So this one, I kind of rolled the stem. So you can kind of do whatever is easiest for you. So there's our paper strip pumpkin. The next one we're going to look at here is... I thought it was a cool idea for Sabbath bags. I don't know if you guys have a Sabbath bag with maybe some fun things that you do during church, but to make like tracers or like, um, like when you thread it with yarn. So this is just a butter lid. And if you don't have a hole punch at home, you can also poke holes with a nail. So again, grownups might have to help here. So you could like poke a hole through with a nail and give yourself a hole, or you could use a scissors and kind of do this number to give yourself some holes. But I'm going to use my hole punch here. So I just gotta work around the rim here, and then we're just gonna punch. So you could, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do a circle because we're talking about pumpkins, so we're gonna see what kind of pumpkin we can make. Um, but you could do a star, you could do a square, you could do any shapes you want and you could have a bunch of these and then they can just be in your Sabbath bag for, um, for different lacing activities. And so these are just lids from butter or sour cream or cottage cheese or whatever. You could also use cardboard. You could use cardboard and you could pump, um, just cut pieces of cardboard down. So I just like these because they seemed like they would be a little more durable. So then oh, I forgot to put my lid here. So now I've got some yarn here. This could be whatever color you want, but I had some that was kind of orange fall colored and I took a piece of tape and I wrapped it around the edge of my yarn to give myself like a pokey edge to get through the holes, kind of like an aglet on your shoelaces. You could even use old shoelaces. But then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna practice my threading skills. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of go around and around. I'm gonna see what what type of pumpkin I could make, right? So we could just do a circle. We could go back and forth. I'll show you the one that's sitting up on the table here. But these are just kind of a fun activity and you could use all sorts of different yarns or embroidery thread or old shoelaces. Oh, I'm catching all my paper, huh? But just kind of going around. You could even get really creative and mix some colors in if you wanted to try and like do a pumpkin and give it a stem of some sort. I'm just gonna keep going around. Whoop. I can get my edge here. Getting tangled. And there we go, one last time around. And there I've got my circle pumpkin. All right, so this one over here, I didn't give myself enough string and I thought I would try, oh, we really got some glare. I thought I would try and go like back and forth and back and forth and see how much I could fill, fill in. But the more I was going, I was like, this kind of looks like a basketball. <laughs> so. You guys can just kind of explore and play with that. But I thought that was really fun. And those would be really easy to just like throw into a Ziploc or include with just practicing all your threading and stuff. So I thought that was kind of fun. So that's some lacing or threading. 
The next one we're gonna do requires a little more cutting. All right, so it also involves um, construction paper. This one's probably, would probably take the most effort um, or a little bit of time because you gotta got, kind of need to do it in stages. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna fold our paper. So here's my construction paper. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna fold it hot dog. You guys know hot dog fold, right? So skinny. Then we're gonna do to the middle. So we're gonna do in thirds, all right? So we're not gonna do a full hamburger, right? We're gonna do like a third and then fold it over, right? It doesn't have to be perfect, don't worry. But what we're doing is we're gonna try and save ourselves some steps here. So I struggle when asked to draw things. So it took me several tries and I made myself a sample kind of pumpkin shape, right? You could choose just to take a pencil and start drawing on your construction paper here and go, I'm gonna draw a pumpkin. But see, here's, here's the thing. Some of you guys have amazing artistic talents and then some of us require practice, all right? So I'm in the practice category, so I'm gonna use my tracer. All right, so I'm gonna use my tracer or you could just draw it straight on. So I'm gonna use my tracer and you take your scissors and you're gonna cut through all the layers. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is gonna be a little bit trickier. It's a little bit harder to cut. It's not too bad though. And you're just gonna cut along here following either the pumpkin you've drawn on or a tracer. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this out. But this helps us save the amount of times that we've got to cut out our pumpkin and then we're not wasting as much paper. All right, because now look what I've got. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of my pumpkins already cut out. All right, and I'm going to do that for three sheets of paper. I'm going to do that for three sheets of paper, all right? So imagine that I just did that, all right? So how many pumpkins would you have total? If I'm getting six pumpkins from each sheet of paper, and I'm using three sheets of paper, so we could count on our fingers, we could count them all up when we're done, we could do six plus six plus six equals, or we could do six times one, two, three sheets of paper, but we're gonna end up with 18, right? 18 of these little pumpkins. So once we have all our little pumpkins cut out, then we're gonna take them and we're gonna fold them in half. Fold them in half, fold in half, fold in half. Fold them all in half. You can even leave them on top of each other and fold a bunch of them all at once, but then you are gonna have to take them apart. Okay, so whatever is easiest for you. So fold them in half. So once I've got all 18 of my pumpkins folded in half, I'm gonna line them all up, all right? I'm gonna line them all up so that I have a nice edge here. And now I'm gonna show you the one that I've already got done over here, all right? So here's my 18 pumpkins, and I've got them all lined up. Okay, so I've got them all lined up here, and then I clamped them with some binder clips. You could use a clothespin, you could use books, but what I did is I then took a bunch of glue, all right? and I glued on the edge. Glue, 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 Whoop. And then I let it dry. All right, so we wanna make sure that we smear the glue so that all of our pumpkin edges get some glue on it because then look what happens when I take my clips off, all right? So we've got all 18 pumpkins and then we can open it up like this, can't we? We can open it up and look at all of our fun pumpkins. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my glue stick and on one of my outside pumpkins, I'm gonna glue like that. And we're gonna take it all the way around and we're gonna connect it to this one on the outside. So we're gonna line that up. And I'm actually gonna use my binder clip again to hold it. And then we're just gonna very gently kind of fluff the rest of our pumpkin out. And these kind of look like those decorations you sometimes see at parties sitting on tables. And so you just take and you kind of fold and fluff our pumpkin. 
But while that's drying, I'll fluff that more once that finishes drying. But then the same thing as like I did, like we did on our pumpkins here, I can give myself a pumpkin stem and I can put it on top and or I could write someone's name and have this be a decoration on a table for Thanksgiving or Sabbath or it could just be um, a place out on your plate but this is one of the other ones but that requires more cutting and things okay so same process for adding a stem or a name on top that we did here is I would just tape or glue that up on top all right so there's our pumpkins with construction paper. Last project is for my artists. So for those of you who love to draw and love some stuff with colors, we're gonna do what's called a Zen Tangle pumpkin. So Zen is kind of like a relaxing thing, right? And so for people like me who struggle, if you just told me, Miss Kelly, will you please draw me a dog? I'd be like, um because I struggle with that. But if you said, Miss Kelly, can you draw me a star? I could be, yes, I can make you a star. So I love doing things like Zen Tangles because it uses a lot of just shapes and patterns so that I don't feel like I have to be able to perfectly draw things. And so the idea behind Zen is all these patterns, all these shapes are relaxing and it's just kind of fun. So we're gonna start by making a pumpkin. So to make my pumpkin here, you could do as many on a page as you want. I'm just gonna do one big pumpkin. Okay, so I'm gonna do a middle oval and then I'm gonna do a, a half oval off of that. And I'm doing this in pencil, so you're not gonna be able to see it, but I'm gonna go over in Sharpie in a minute. But I have to start with pencil, otherwise I goof. All right, and then I'm gonna do another half oval off of that. And now I'm gonna come this way with a half oval and this way with a half oval. And then kind of connect, give myself a stem, and then maybe give myself a curly off the top for like a pumpkin vine. So now using a black marker or a Sharpie, <coughs> it works with either. Once you've got a pumpkin that you like, make sure you like it, then we trace it. So I'm gonna trace all my lines here. This one did not turn out too bad considering the amount of times I practiced beforehand. <laughs> you could make, think about all the different pumpkins in our pumpkin patch parable story, right? There's lumpy bumpy pumpkins, there's skinny tall pumpkins, there's short squat pumpkins, all sorts of different pumpkins. So you could really experiment and make as many different pumpkins as you want. You could do lots of small pumpkins on one page. You could draw pumpkins out in the pumpkin patch. Lots of different ways we could do this. Okay, so we're we seeing my pumpkin starting to take shape here, hopefully. And then I'm gonna put my stem on top. And then my vine curly off of it. There we go. There's my pumpkin. Now here's the fun part. Now, I'm gonna break it up into quadrants, however I want. So I'm gonna go whoop, and then I'm maybe just gonna come across, go whoop, uh, maybe one like that. <clears throat> and I feel like I need one more like this. All right, so look at all of my different spots here, all of my different shapes. So now I'm going to take a fine tip Sharpie. You could do this with a black pen. You could do this with a fine tip marker. Um, it, you're, it's all up to you. I'm just gonna use a fine tip Sharpie. And now we get to pick patterns to put into each little quadrant. So maybe in one, I'm gonna do stars. And I'm just gonna draw so many little stars here and I'm just gonna fill it in with stars. Star, star, star. What's, what's pattern should I do next? What about, what about swirls? If you're learning your cursive letters, you could practice cursive letters. Like you could do the cursive alphabet in here, I bet.
What about making one that's like plaid? Right, so I make like the checker box. And then I kind of color in every other. All right, so I'm doing this in a very quick job, right? If I were really doing this, I would fill these in more intricately. What other patterns can we think of? What about polka dots, triangles, arrows, lots of different options. What about ones where we just did um, like a swirl, um, like, like dashes? And we just fill it with all these dashes. Like the possibilities are endless. What type of patterns, what type of textures could you do with this, all right? So I'm gonna stop with this one and I'm gonna show you the next step and then I'll show you my finished one, right? So you could fill it with so many different types of patterns. Then you could use watercolors, you could use colored pencils. I'm gonna use markers, but I'm gonna take all of my warm colors, right? All of my warm colors on the color wheel, um, but probably not, yeah. And then maybe this brown. All right, so my pumpkin colors, my pumpkin colors. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna color this one, this color yellow, and I'm just gonna color over it, all right? So I'm just gonna go in this quadrant. All right, so this one's gonna get to be this color. And you'll end up coloring more than one because I could color this one down here and this one down here and this one down here. I'm gonna color this one like this. So you could use whatever coloring stuff you wanted to. And then I'm gonna use this orange on this one. These are kind of close in shape. I'm gonna use my red. When, you, when I put the markers over like sharp um, the the black pen, right? So if you were just using like a ballpoint pen or something, it might smear a little bit, but that's okay. All right, so just be aware that sometimes like a marker would smear. And then I'm gonna use my bright yellow over here. And I would do this after I had all of my little sections filled with patterns. And you can repeat the same pattern if you want to. Also, like if you were totally stumped and didn't know what to do, you could always repeat or do it differently. You could do smiley faces, stars. But anyways, I would color and fill this up. Are you ready to see the one that I made earlier that I finished? Here's my other one. There it is, right? So look at all of my patterns. I've got squiggles and stars. I've got one that kind of looks like fish scales. I got triangles, tree rings. I got one like bricks, like a spider web. I even got some smiley faces in there. And then all I did was I took all my colors and I colored in each one and it's like this fun patchwork pumpkin. What do you think of that? All right, so obviously the younger you are or depending on how intricate you wanna do or how much time you wanna spend, the less quadrants you give yourself, the less patterns that you would have to do and the less colors. All right, so there's lots of different ways that you can make these, but they turn out looking really fun. All right, so those are our crafts for this month, all right? So we've got our Zentangle pumpkin, we've got our, our flare pumpkin, we've got our paper strip pumpkins, we've got our tracer lacing activity pumpkins. So I hope you have a lot of fun this month exploring your artistic side, doing some crafts, doing some creativity, and who knows, maybe you can even decorate for Thanksgiving this month with some of these. So have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Have a wonderful rest of this month. I will see you in the other videos, but enjoy these crafts. Please send me pictures. I would love to see how they turn out. My email address and phone number is in the description below. I will see you later.